Hello, everyone. Happy Tuesday. It's time for another card making tutorial session with independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator Teresa Harper. I'm located in Oregon in the United States, and I'm so glad that you are joining me tonight. We will be using the Easter Lily stamp set along with the Easter Lily dies. You can purchase these as a bundle and save 10%, or you can purchase them separately. Um, you choose. All right, let's go ahead and see who we have on. I'm about a minute early, so we're going to see if anybody else has jumped on. And then we'll get started. I've got a uh, couple of cards for you tonight. I did make a three-day a three D project that I will show you, and um, I've got a new technique for you. Or really, it's not a new technique, but I haven't done it in years. So we're going to try that out tonight. Hello, Laura. Hello, Jennifer. Hello, Cynthia. You ladies. Thank you so much for always showing up. I really appreciate you. All right. So who's excited about, let's see if I can straighten up this camera and try just a bit, see if I'm going the right direction. It's a little bit of a slow move. Oh, I think I'm making it worse. Oh, let's go this direction. Oh, there we go. Got it. Got it. There we go. That looks better. Looks better. Okay. So we're going to be using Easter lilies. Who has this? Hello, Tracy. I'm so glad you joined us. I figured that you would be exhausted and ready for bed after your day today. Thanks so much. Okay. So anybody have this set? And then the coordinating dies. We're going to make three. Well, we're going to make two projects. I'm going to show you three. Um, let's just start with the 3D project I made. And I'll show you that. And then we'll move on to our tutorials. Okay, so this is the 3D project that I made to go along with the Easter lilies. It's a slider box. And holds two Godiva dark chocolate ganache hearts, or six Hershey's Kisses. You choose. I really love the way that turned out. Just that little lily. These little leaves are from the autumn leaves dies that carried over from the holiday catalog, and then I embossed them. First, I cut them in basic white, and then I used my light old olive on them to color them and then I ran them through the fern 3d embossing folder to give them that really cool texture okay so that's that this comes from the cracker and treat box dies the little tag and the hello is from the go to greetings okay so we've got that I'm gonna set that aside and let's go ahead and we will get started with our card. Well, I'm glad this is relaxing and you can wind on down, Tracy. Okay, so we're going to, uh, in addition to the Easter Lily bundle, we're going to be getting our sentiment, Happy Easter, from the Throughout the Year stamp set. This also carried over from the holiday catalog. You'll find it in the online exclusives currently. Okay. And then I'm using one of our celebration free papers. And that is the Just Kidding paper. Now, you need to be sure when you're adding this paper to your cart that you go through the celebration uh, section of the checkout. Because if you add the regular number from the catalog... <clears throat> then it will 
charge you for it rather than give it to you as a celebration item. So if you have any questions on that, be sure to contact me before you check out, okay? So we're gonna be using this piece of paper from the Just Kidding. And then we're going to be using the Radiating Stitches dies. These are in the online exclusives, I believe. I believe, yes, yes. So we've got those, and we're gonna be using the largest of that die. I've already cut that in basic white. Okay, let's set that aside because we don't need it at the moment. And if I set it where I just set it, I'm not gonna find it if I need it later. <laughs> so let me, let me put that where I should. Okay, so here are our pieces. I've done some die cutting already. I also cheated a little bit and I got carried away in my prep. So my piece of basic white that I cut with the radiating stitches, I've already adhered my piece of DSP. And this is... Uh, now I can't remember. I wrote it down and I threw that piece of paper away, I think. Let me look. One and three quarters by four and a quarter. Okay. And I've already adhered that to the center of the radiating stitches die. Okay. Got a little carried away. Then we've got a piece of old olive. And I've cut out two of the leaves from the Easter Lily dies. Cut this one and this one, both with the old olive. And then I've cut out the four pieces that I need to put my Lily together in basic white. Okay, so we've got these four pieces. So you would cut one of these this, this, and that. And that's how we're gonna put our lily together. And I, you can cut them out in color, but I cut them out in basic white and we're going to put a little color on them with some blends. You'll need a scrap piece of old olive big enough for your sentiment. And then you'll need some more basic white for stamping. Okay, so I've got, my piece here. Let's move these pieces out of the way. And we're going to grab the palm leaf from the set. We've got a few Stampin' Blends we're going to be using. And our ink pads. Daffodil Delight, Parakeet Party, and Mossy Meadow. Okay, so I'm going to start with the Mossy Meadow. And I'm going to ink up my palm. And I need two of the palms. I'm only going to stamp one, though, because I've already uh, stamped, die cut, and colored the other one. Because you didn't need to watch me do that. Okay. So we've got that, and then let's set that aside for a minute. Let's bring in our sentiment strip and our Happy Easter, and we're going to be embossing this in white. Let me get that out of the way so I don't get my ink on that. Okay. So I brought in my embossing additions toolkit here. I'm going to, I like to put a little coffee filter in my tray. Just easier to dump back in for me. The tray does have a spout and you can do that, but my coffee filter is just easier. So we're going to use our embossing buddy to remove any static from our papers. And I'm going to take some stays, or Versamark. This is a watermark. Jeez. I'm trying to get it open. 
Okay, and then I'm just going to ink up my stamp. This is a nice new one. My other one looked pretty gross, so. Okay, then I'm just going to stamp that down and pull that up. I'm going to close up my Versamark which seems to be being stubborn tonight, jeez. Okay, and then we're going to pour our powder on that. Oh, that almost looks like I messed it all up. Let's see what we can do with that. It's a little bit messy on the edge here. I'm going to take my brush from the embossing additions kit. Just brush that away. And try not to brush my ink off. Or my powder. Okay, well at least it looks better this time putting it on. Okay, give that a tap. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and put a cap on my powder so that if I drop the tray, I'm not making a huge mess. And I'm gonna set that out of the way. Then I'm gonna grab my sentiment strip, my reverse tweezers, and we're going to have a loud noise for the embossing, heat embossing tool. Okay, and then I'm just going to heat it from underneath. And hopefully you can see that turning. The magic of heat embossing. Okay, got just a little bit left on the H. All right, there we go. That all looks pretty good. Okay, so our sentiment is ready. And we can set that aside for now. We're going to fussy cut that later. And let's see, let's go ahead now. And I think, I think that's all our pieces. Okay, so let's bring back in our um, palm. And I'm going to pull out my silicone mat here. And I'm going to grab the Light Old Olive Stampin' Blend. And I'm just going to fill those in. And I made sure I cut this piece so it would fit through the mini. Mostly because I wanted to show you how to line this one up. It's got quite a few little holes to help you. So we're just going to color this in real quick. Follow these leaves. Some of them cross over each other. Over and under. I have to be real careful because I have put the color where it shouldn't go. Getting lost in the tangled mess up top there. Okay, so we've got the light old olive. Now we're going to take our dark old olive. Let's see if I can make my almost dry one work for my advantage here. Oh yeah, it's going to work. Yay. At least a little bit. I have a new one, but I kind of like this one, the way this one flicks the color.
not nearly as prominent as a brand new one. So, and that was the look I was going for. So I'm trying to make it last for this one. Yay. Okay. So that almost dry marker really worked to our advantage there. Okay. So let's go ahead and grab the die for this. And I'll show you, I'm going to go ahead and cut this. Just because I don't want to run the whole thing through. That whole piece. Okay, let's grab our mini machine and bring that in along with the plates. Okay, and let's just move this out of the way for a minute. Okay, so we're going to grab our die, which is this one right here. And this one has one, two, three, four, five holes along the tips of the fronds. And then it has a hole at the bottom for the stem. So I like to place this in here how I think it should go. And then I'm going to line up my stem first and hold on to that. And then I'm going to just rotate these until I can see the tips of the other fronds. And either I don't have it just right. Oh, I need to stand up because I do have it just right. <laughs> I just couldn't see those holes from a seated position. Okay. So now I've got all that lined up. I'll bring this back in. And we'll put it in our sandwich. One to the die and paper. And another plate two on the top. And roll that through. And then we can put this out of the way. Okay. And then you can see we have a perfectly lined up frond. Okay. So let's get these back out of the way. Put that back on its place. And I'm going to move that stamp out of the way. Okay. So we've got a card base of Daffodil Delight. This is a standard card base, five and a half. Just double checking, it looked a little large. Nope, five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter in the center. Okay. Then we'll just take our bone folder, burnish that down. All right. And now I'm gonna go ahead and just add this to the front of our card, this panel that we've already prepared. And then we'll start adding our layers. Oh, but first we have to make our lily, don't we? We better get that done. Next. We've got a little bit of coloring on there to do. Okay, so now I'm gonna set this aside. And that is scrap. Let's bring in our silicone mat and our pieces. Okay. Now the way this is going to go together, we're going this is going to go down and then we're going to put this over the top. But I want to put some shading in here. I looked online and of course lilies are all kinds of different colors but they do have some green or the Easter lily has some green in the center here. This one's going to go in this direction and we're going to go with this and this 
put a little bit here. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna do that with yellow. Okay, so I think we're good on nope, I need to the tip of this. And then that's it on that. Okay, so that's parakeet, the light parakeet party. Then I'm going to take my light lemon lolly. And I'm just going to turn this upside down. And I'm just going to kind of flick some color up these lines a little bit. Okay. And again, here. And here. This will lighten up as it goes. Okay. I think I'm happy with that. And then we're going to put a little bit lemon lolly on these Let's give them some color and then I want the dark lemon lolly I'm just gonna put a little bit of darkness right here on the tips of those okay so there we have that now let's go ahead and start assembling but before i do that i actually want to i'm going to take some wink of stella just on my centerpiece here the stamen I think that's what that's called, if I remember from high school biology. Okay. Then we'll set that aside to dry and then the glue uh, will stick to it better. Okay, so I'm gonna put this together with glue dots. I'm gonna start adding a couple of glue dots. To the back of this. And then I'm just going to put this in the center here, lining up those bottom edges together. And I'll put that in. And then we're going to add our stamen right in here. So we're going to take another glue dot. We're going to be extra careful with this one so it doesn't rip. It's really rather tiny. And we're just going to stick this right in here, like so. And then we'll take another glue dot or two. And I actually. I'm going to, I don't like, I guess this is going, I want to put a little extra there. So that it looks right when it all comes together. Okay, so then we're just going to put this down here right over the top of that round portion of the stamen. And there is our lily okay so now we're ready to start adding this to our card so let's bring back in that card base and here's the frond the palm frond that we colored and here's one that i did ahead of time and i'm going to put this up here like so and with this one here like so I think and then we'll add this over here we've got to make sure though that when we add this 
we don't go off the edge of our card. And I'm going to put this one over here. And then we'll put this down here like so. And then I need to just make sure I've got enough room for my sentiment. So I'm going to set that aside for a minute. And I'm going to grab my pencil. And just going to go around with my pencil line. And trace that. And then I'll grab my scissor. And follow that line. And I'm trying to cut inside the line so that I don't have to erase so much. But if we have to erase, it's okay. So we'll just give that a quick trim. Trim off the excess there so that I can have an easier time getting to the rest of this. All right. And there's our sentiment. Now I'm just going to take a quick erase here along the bottom. And the top. Okay. Now we can bring our card back in, make sure we've got plenty of room here. Okay. And then we can start putting this down. Okay, so I'm gonna remove my pieces. I'm gonna put this down. like so and remove this one put that one in here like that okay and then we'll curve this one down This one, like so. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and let's put this up here like this. I'm going to put, I'm going to grab a dimensional. Grab the mini. Yeah, no, I can use a regular one, I think. And I'm going to put one of these here. So that will make those even there. And then, oh, let's see. I want that to stay fairly flat. So we're going to take our, our glue dots. Add these to the back here. Okay. We'll remove that. And then we'll put this down here like so. And press those glue dots into place. I didn't want to, I wanted to leave these free so that we get some added dimension and interest that way. Now, let's see. I don't know let's, if this is going to work for 
large dimensionals. Okay. And these are right here. I'm going to put one there and one there. Okay, almost done with the outside of this card. Okay. And we're just going to put this down here like so. Okay, now let's see if we can find some gems to put on there. And let's look at the iridescent foil gems. I think those will look really nice. So let's go. One, I'll put one there, a large one. Put a small one here. And then I'm going to go with another large one down here. All right. So there is the outside of our card. Now for the inside, I took a piece of basic white. Three and five eighths by four and seven eighths. And I stamped this image, which is this one on the stamp set. And I just ran it along the bottom in crumb cake. And then I took another one of those images, stamped it in Daffodil Delight, and then just colored the stem in. Uh, old olive, light old olive. I'm going to add this to the inside of our card. I left the sentiment blank. So you could just write your message. And then I did the same uh, from palm frond on the envelope. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed that project. Let's go ahead and get ready for the next one, which is going to take a little bit of time with the technique. Okay, let's go ahead and set this aside. And move that actually out of the way. So I don't want that to get messed up. And we'll bring in our next project. Okay, so I have done some pre-stuff on the next project. And I don't think we need any Stampin' Blends. We're actually going to be using colored pencils, the watercolored pencils. And I have um, an assortment here, and about half of these are from a, assortment one, and the other half are from assortment two. So we have two assortments and I'm using them both. Okay, so in addition to the Easter lilies, I'm using Wonderful Thoughts for the Sentiment. And that's Thinking of You. And then we're going to be using the background stamp. Botanical Beauty. This is a one-piece stamp. And, of course, we'll be using the Wonderful Thoughts dies. That's what I cut out the thinking of you with, this one right here. And, finally, Everyday Details dies. These are um, in the new mini catalog. I did not get the stamp set. The stamp set does not coordinate directly with the dies. So I chose to just get the dies. Okay, so let's go ahead. We've got our colored pencils. Let's, we've got a thick basic white card base. I've got four by five and a quarter inch black, although I think this might actually be a little bit bigger than that. 
but that's what it's going to end up at. Nope, I cut it right at four by five and a quarter. Yeah, I thought that said five and an eighth for a minute. Maybe it still did. You know, no, I'm good. Shoo, my eyes are playing tricks. I've got the largest of the circles in the everyday details in basic white. I've got a scrap piece of black. And let's see. Then I have a piece of four by five and a quarter inch black. I cut the, a, a deckled rectangle out of the center uh, just to save, because this is gonna go on the inside and I didn't want the extra weight, so I just cut a deckled circle out of the center. You can either just use a flat piece or you can um, cut something out of the center to save yourself. For the inside piece, I stamped one of those I, um, Easter lilies and I colored it with the colored pencils. And we're just gonna go ahead and add that to this black piece now. and get that done. Just using some Tombow glue here. I just want a thin bead so that I don't. Oh, thanks guys for the, I'm glad you liked that card. Okay. I don't know why you haven't got wonderful thoughts, Tracy. It works great for everything and I love the fact that it has the dyes. Okay, so now this is ready for the inside of our card. We'll set that aside. Actually, let's just go ahead and take our card base and put it on the inside. Why not? Let's get that done. Okay, so we've got our card base. Again, standard A2, five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter. And... Take a little bit of tape and add this to the inside right here. I thought the black really set that white off. That's why I did that layer. And it really goes with our color theme here. Okay, so we can set that aside. Now, we need white ink. For this, Stampin' Up! does have a white craft ink that um, you can use. It takes a long time to dry, so I recently got this Tailored Expressions uh, Sugar Cube white pigment ink um, pad, so that's what I'm going to use. It dries faster. So we're going to take this and we're going to take the Botanical Beauty stamp set and I'm going to ink this up with the white pigment ink. Now you can totally do this technique with Stampin' Up! ink. It just takes a lot longer to dry and we don't have that kind of time. So I'm going to take my piece of black and I'm gonna set this down on my ink pad or on my stamp. And then I'm gonna take a scrap piece of paper. I like to take a block and just give that a good rub. I make sure before I move my block that I have my the other side secured because I don't want anything moving. Okay, and then I'm gonna lift that up and this is what we have, okay? Now let me set this out of the way because we won't need that again. But you can see how pretty that black on the, or the white on the black is. And then you let that dry for just a minute and then we're going to take and take our colored pencils and bring that in. You know what? Let's let that dry for just a minute more. And while we're doing that, let's go ahead and stamp our lily. 
And we're going to do that. I'm using a stamp positioner for this one. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to put this in and get that white ink again. Make sure I've got that in the frame. And we're going to ink that up. And then we're going to stamp that down. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and ink that again. I want a nice solid image here. This is our main focal point. Okay, so we've got that. Now we can set that aside. And I'm going to throw something in here because I don't want to clean that. We're going to use that one more time. Okay, so now we'll set this aside. And we'll bring back in our first piece. And the way I did this, you're not going to have to watch the whole thing because I've already done it. So I'm going to take my Flirty Flamingo uh, pencil. And because this is a cushion surface, I'm going to bring in a piece of chipboard to give me a little bit more sturdiness here. And I'm going to color on top of the white. with my pencil. Okay, I'm gonna turn my pencil as I go so that my um, tips stay sharp on all sides. And then I'm gonna take Melon Mambo and I'm gonna add just some accent here. Okay, turn my paper as I go. And the beauty of this is if you get a little bit of pencil where you don't want it, you just bring in one of these erasers and erase it out. And voila, you never made a mistake. Okay, so we'll get another flirty flamingo here. Okay. And we're just going to throw some color in the center parts here. Okay, and I did that for all, for these three, and then this one, and these ones I'm going to do in yellow. So I'm going to do in Daffodil Delight. And I don't have to worry about the center part because I'm going to be covering that. So this section here, I'm not worrying about. I'm gonna take some crushed curry and add a little color here. Okay, so I've got that. Now this, I'm gonna take my blue and on this one up here, I'm gonna color this in blue and you think, oh, blue leaves? There's no such thing. We don't have blue leaves. Give me a minute here. I'll show you how I'm going to make this work. This is the beauty of colored pencils. So I'm going to take the blue and do that. And then I'm going to take my yellow, Daffodil Delight, and I'm going to go over the top. And those are going to combine to make a green. And that will be different from the other greens that I have. I had more leaves than I had greens. And so I decided that I could just mix my colors and make my own. Okay. So there we have that. Okay, so I just keep going on and coloring with my pencils until I had it all finished and it looks like this. Okay, do the magic of TV. Voila, and you can see that I left the center there empty. 
because we're going to put our white circle over the top, okay? So now let's grab our lily. And this one is gonna be just a little bit different. We're going to be using the Flirty Flamingo and Melon Mambo, and then I'm gonna take some Daffodil Delight and some Crushed Curry. Okay, so let's start with the, you know, I'm going to put this on first and hope that this works, This that this will help me a little bit. So I'm going to take my Daffodil Delight and I'm going to go over my stamen in the middle. And then I'm going to add a little bit of crushed curry to the tip here. All right. And here. All right. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to take my melon mambo. And I'm going to start on these white areas here. And I'm going to go around them with my pencil. And I'm pressing fairly firmly with this Melon Mambo because I want this bright color to pop. Okay. So I'm just going to go over and around those areas there. This will be a little bit dark, I think. Dark here. I'm going to put a little bit of dark up here over and around and I'm going around because I am going to go back over and stamp the white right back over the top of this so that's why I want this melon mambo to go outside of the white so that I still get my highlights okay so I'm gonna put a little bit of dark here where those petals overlap and in the center here, some good firm pressure, remembering to turn my pencil every now and again as I go. And you can see this really doesn't take that long. And I don't know if you can see how well that colored pencil looks on top of that black. I'm going to go back with the lighter Flirty Flamingo. And I'm going to fill in where I have not put the Melon Mambo. I'll mix the Melon Mambo and the Flirty Flamingo a little. But for the most part, I'm avoiding the Melon Mambo. Okay. So we've got that. And I'm trying to fill in anywhere I can see black. This will take some good firm pressure because you're on black. You wouldn't have to press near this firmly if you were on a piece of white. Okay. So we'll just do that. And I see a little bit of black here. Let's get rid of that. Okay, so that's where we're at now. At this point, I want to check this out and make sure that I'm good. And I can't really see black through there. So just add a little bit more of the Flirty Flamingo. I'm layering my color. Okay, and I'm happy with that. So now I'm going to let that sit for just a second. I'm going to grab this stamp positioning tool back in.
and I'm going to ink that up in white again just to bring back some of that white. Make sure that's firmly in the corner. Give it a press. And when I lift it up, that's what I have. Okay, so now I've got to set this aside because that white, because it's on top of the colored pencil now, and it was wet. Now my colored pencil is wet. So I am actually going to bring in my heating tool. You could set it aside and just let it dry. But we don't have time for that. So I'm going to use setting number one, which is the drying setting. And I'm just going to heat that up a little bit to ensure that those layers of ink dry. And I don't have to wait too long. Because that is a watercolor pencil and once you put wet ink on it, then you activate the color. Okay, so we should be good now, I think. Don't look too wet. All right, but let's go ahead and do our other things and set that aside for a minute. I'm gonna bring in another piece of scrap paper and my um, everyday detail die cut that I made. And we're gonna take our flirty flamingo and melon mambo, which I put away for some reason. Okay, we're gonna take flirty flamingo. I'm gonna start with that. I'm gonna take a blending brush. And I'm gonna bring in my silicone pad here. That's gonna do two things for me. Uh, move that so you can see. It's gonna keep my pad from moving. And then I can rub off there. And I'm just going to go a little bit along the outside edge here. I don't want to go in too far, but I do want just a hint of the flir flirty flamingo in. Okay. I want to leave the center white. I'm done with my flirty flamingo. And now I'm going to grab the melon mambo. And then I'm going to go just on the very outside edge. So I want to preserve that, some of that flirty flamingo. But yet bring in the melon mambo color. Okay. Pretty happy with that. Okay, so we can set that aside. And now this piece is ready to be added to our card. So we're gonna bring back in that colored pencil piece. And we're gonna add this to the center of that. Like so. Do that. All right. And then I'm going to go ahead and add this piece to my card base. Oh, hello, Lynette. Oh, that's great that Willamina Beat Salem Academy. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and put this on. All right. Okay, so there's where we're at so far. Now let's take that. We need to die cut this piece. And, oh, and I forgot to have you stamp the, we needed to do two pieces because we needed to do the, um, oops, I forgot this part. We needed to stamp this in white on the black and then color it with green. Sorry, I already did that. So there it is. I did it the same way, but I did not re-stamp the white over the top on this piece. So I used... Garden green and old olive on this piece to color it with the colored pencils, just like I showed you on the lily itself. So we've got that. And then I want to take this and I'm going to attach it to my um, lily. So I'm going to take the you know what? No, I'm not. I'm just going to go like this. I'm going to cheat this time. I'm going to get that where I want it, which is about right there. And I'll flip that over. And I'm going to grab a Stampin' Dimensional. And I'm going to secure that with a Stampin' Dimensional. Just like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and add some more Stampin' Dimensionals to there. I don't think I need the minis now. What did I do with that? There they are. I need the minis for these. And we'll put one right there. Okay. And then we'll take the backs off. Okay, and then we're going to put this right here like so, set that in, and then we need our sentiment, and I already heat embossed that in white on black with that wonderful thoughts stamps and dies and we're going to add this to whoops sorry bumped the camera and this to the front like so Okay, and then for the envelope, I did a yellow lily. I stamped this in basic gray, and then I colored it with Daffodil Delight. That, we've got our inside piece, and our cards are complete. Okay. Thanks, Tracy. I'm glad you liked that. Now, I did want to quickly, I'm going to quickly show you how I colored this. So I'm going to grab a scrap piece of white, which I had here a second ago. Let's see. Okay, there we go. And let's clean the lily real quick because we don't need it to be white. All right, so I'm going to get that white off. That white actually has pink in it now. Because it was wet, so I'm just going to take a baby wipe and clean that off a bit. It's not like the Stampin' Up! White where it gets white everywhere, but before I really do that, I'm going to do this. Okay? So with colored pencils, you can do some cool techniques. Let me go ahead and put this in here. 
Um, for this one, I'm going to stamp an early espresso. Get this where you can see it. Early espresso. And then I'm just going to, I didn't get it all. I see that right away. Okay. All right, there we go. So now I've got that. And let's put the early espresso away. And here is the cool trick with colored pencils. So this, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead, you know what, I'm, st I'm gonna stick with the Melon Mambo and the um, Flirty Flamingo. So I'm gonna take the Melon Mambo and I'm gonna pretty much do what I did before. I'm gonna rough this, okay. Get a little bit of dark in here. I'm not going to stamp over the top of this one, so I don't need to worry about really going around those areas now. And this is just going to be a quick, quick color, just because I want to show you this technique with the colored pencils. And show you the difference on what you can do between the white and the black. Okay, so I'm just going to put some Melon Mambo in here. Okay, I think I'm happy with that. Now I'm going to take my Flirty Flamingo and I'm going to go back and fill that all in. Um, it would be better if I had my, here it is. Here we go. Just colors better if you're on a little bit harder surface rather than the cushion. Okay, so I'm just gonna color this in. And you can see I'm not really being all that careful. Just coloring, trying to stay in the lines, but remember with the colored pencils, if I go out, I can just erase it. Okay, so I've got that. Almost done here. One more petal. All right. Okay, so now we've got that. Now, I'm gonna bring in my color lifter. And I prefer to use the brush tip for this. And I'm gonna take my color lifter and I'm just gonna go over this. Okay. And then can you tell the difference between this petal and these petals? See how I've kind of removed the lines, the coloring lines from the pencil? This works just like a blender pin, only it's better, I think, because if the blender pin, if you go over an area repeatedly on just regular basic white, you'll get pilling. And because this is an alcohol marker and the paper doesn't stay wet, it doesn't pill. Now that's not to say that if you went over it 20 times that it may not peel. But in your basic coloring, like I'm doing here, I'm not gonna get any pilling. And now you see the difference in that image. Okay. So I've shown you a couple of colored pencil techniques tonight. I hope you've found those useful. And if you don't have the watercolor pencils, I encourage you to pick yourself up 
the assortments. We don't have that many colors. I think there's 13 in one and 10 in the other, so you only get 23, but when you mix and match those, and especially when you do it this way, because I can take this, I can take my greens. Let, well, let's do here. I'll just show you here. Let's take a spot of the blue. And again, I'm going to add my yellow because yellow and blue make green. And just doing that starts to make it look green. But then when I add my color lifter, then I get a whole new color. Okay. Okay. All right. Oh, hello, Cynthia. Thank you. I'm so glad you enjoyed those cards. And all right. I think that's everything that I have for you. Unless you want to see the cute little treats I made for the kiddos for the Valentine's using Fluffiest Friends and Country Bouquet. Thought those turned out rather lovely. I think they're going to like them. All right. I will see you. Thanks for all the hearts and thumbs ups. That's so sweet. I will see you again next Tuesday night at the same time. Hope everybody has a great week. Good night.